we're excited to introduce support for server-side rendering authentication patterns. With these changes, we're enhancing the developer experience when it comes to building with popular frameworks that support SSR, such as Next.js, Astro, SvelteKit, Nuxt, and others like them. So up until now, AppRite's authentication system was optimized for client-side rendering, and this works well for single page applications, but has its limitations with how SSR was implemented. Now, there were ways to implement authentication with SSR before, but the methods that developers used were hacky or undocumented. To understand the new changes and workflows, we first need to take a step back and look at the challenges that we aim to solve in this release. So first, when building server rendered apps, we need a way to generate a session secret on the server side so we can send it back to be stored on the user's browser. So this way, a user can perform authenticated requests against protected routes. The problem we faced before was that there was no way to access a session secret using AppRite's authentication methods through the SDK. So for example, when using methods such as create email session, AppRite's web SDK would automatically store the session in the browser's cookies, but it doesn't make it available to us. Now, this is a non-issue for client-side rendering because we don't need to actually access that session manually. However, when it comes to server-side rendering, we need a way to access that session secret so we can actually set it on our server's cookies for a subsequent request. With these challenges in mind, let's take a look at the changes we made to solve them. So first, to solve the issue of session availability on the server, all existing SDK methods that create a session will now return a session object. So this means we can now access the session secret and set a session cookie on the server. With a session secret set, we can now retrieve it on subsequent requests and use it to authenticate users with a new set session method, as well as access protected routes. With SSR, we're now gonna be initiating two AppRite clients. We'll have an admin client for performing admin requests and a session client that's gonna be performing authenticated requests on the behalf of an end user. Admin clients should only be used when you need to perform actions that bypass permissions or unauthenticated requests that bypass rate limits. And when you're initiating an admin client, you'll need to make sure that you have an API key with the necessary scopes Otherwise, your server will be rate limited when trying to reach certain endpoints. To use a session client for performing authenticated requests on the behalf of a user, we'll need to initialize it with the set session method by passing in a session secret, which will usually be stored within a cookie. Okay, now for the fun part, we're gonna put into practice everything we just learned. And what we'll do is build out a simple Next.js application with two API routes, one for creating a session and setting a session cookie, and the other will be for making a request to a protected route that gets us back the currently authenticated user once that session cookie is set. So really quickly to summarize this, we have a Next.js application already set up. It's very minimalist. I just created two API routes that don't do anything. This one right here is the sign-in route, returns back a JSON response, so no functionality yet. And then the other one is just to get a user. And if we test this with Postman, and this is what we'll be using, we can just go ahead and make these requests and see the responses here. So I can see the user is null and we're not actually creating a session right now. So the first thing we'll wanna do is go ahead and install AppRite. So we'll just go ahead and install the Node SDK. So make sure that's set up and then we can continue on with creating our AppRite clients. So our AppRite clients will sit in the source directory and we're just gonna go ahead and create a new file in the lib folder and we'll just call this AppRite.js. So once you have the Node SDK installed, we can just go ahead and import the client class and the account class. And we're gonna create the two AppRite clients. So remember, we need a client for creating a session and making unauthenticated requests to get past rate limits and such. And then the other one's gonna be a session client for the authenticated user. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a method that initiates our admin client. And we can call this on each request anytime we actually need an instance of the client. And we'll also just go ahead and create our session client right below here. And this one's gonna be a little bit different because we need our request here. And this is where we're actually gonna get that session cookie and add that into the client. So for our admin client, let's go ahead and create our client instance, and this will be new client. And then we can set the endpoint and we'll set the project here. So with this, I've already created my environment variables. I'm just gonna go ahead and import them and then bring them into their own variables here. 
So we'll just pass in the endpoint and then the project ID. So make sure that you have this information in your console and then just go ahead and bring in whatever is relevant to you. So because this is an admin client, we need to generate a API key and actually set that here. So I'm going to go into my console here and we'll go into the overview tab and we need to generate a new API key and we're just going to call this uh, tutorial or tut. So that's going to be the name of our key. You can name this whatever you want. And we need to set some scopes for this key. So if we actually want to use this to create a session at a minimum, we need to go ahead and set the auth scope of session dot right. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and give this API key full scopes to absolutely everything. So if you're using this key, you can basically make any request you want to this application. So we'll go ahead and generate it and I'll expose the API key here, but no issues because I'll just delete this after this video. So let's just manually just paste this in. Actually, let's do this. We'll just go ahead and create a new variable called API underscore key. And we'll throw that in here so it doesn't mess up our screen and we'll pass that in. Okay, so we initiate the client with a key. And when we initiate this, I actually want to go ahead and also initiate the account instance and then return that back to the user immediately. So let's just go ahead and call return. And we're going to use a getter method to get the account here. And we're going to return a new account instance. So return new account and we can just pass in the client instance. Okay, so when we call this method, we initiate a new client and we're going to make available the account instance immediately. So once we call this, we can immediately call account.create email and password session and so on. So we can proceed with those requests. Now for create session here, let's go ahead and actually just copy some of the stuff right here. So we want to go ahead and also create a new client. So we'll bring this to create session. It's going to look a little bit different. So we don't need an API key here and we're also going to return an account. So that can be copied over as well. And from here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to get the session from the request. So this is going to be an authenticated request. So let's go ahead and actually get the session. So we'll do const session, then call request.cookies.get. And we can get the session key here. So this is why we pass in request so we can access that. And then the next step would be to authenticate our user by checking the session. So we can say if there is a session, let's go ahead and actually set this to client dot set session and we can pass in the session dot value so this will authenticate our user and we should be good to go from here so i just noticed something this should be create session client so i missed that one part maybe you noticed that earlier but create session client and create admin client so from this point i can just go ahead and export this and we can use this inside of our actual api routes so create admin client and create session client Okay, now that we've created our two methods to create an admin and a session client, let's go ahead and actually start using them. So we'll start with a sign in route first. And here we need to go ahead and generate a session and then go ahead and set the session cookie. So we're going to import create admin client right here. And from here, we're just going to go ahead and get the account and we can call await and then create admin client. So this account right here will be the account that we generate and that response right there. So that'll be the account instance. And then from here, we want to go ahead and just get the email and password that's going to be sent on the post request. So email and password, and this will be await. And then we can do request dot JSON. And let's go ahead and actually now create the session itself. And we'll just test this out in a second. So once we have the email and password, we can do const session and this is going to be await account dot create email and password session. And we're just going to go ahead and throw in the email and then the password here. Okay. So this should generate a session. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just console out the session. We'll see what it looks like the session object, and then we can continue to set the session cookie. Okay, so let's go ahead and just test this in Postman. I've already added my credentials here, so we're just going to go ahead and send this over. And let's see, looks like the request was successful. And if I check the session object here, let's go ahead and just see what we get. So we get back this massive object. We have an ID. We see the user ID, the expiration, all my information. And then we actually see the session secret. So the secret key right there, this is what we're going to use to set it. And then we should see expiration and so on. So we can use all this information to set the actual session cookie. So let's go ahead and do that now. So the first thing I need to do is import cookies from next headers. So cookies, 
and here is where I'll set the cookie itself. So we'll do cookies dot set, and this will be a session. And from here, we'll just call session dot secret. So remember in the object, there was a session secret right there. So we can go ahead and grab that. And then we'll just go ahead and set HTTP only. This will be true. And then secure, this will also be true. And then same site, this is gonna be strict. And for the expiration, we'll do max age. And this is where we can go ahead and just get the expiration date on the session. So we'll create a new date and call session dot expire. And then the last thing we need is the path. So we'll just go ahead and set that. And that'll just be forward slash. And we can go ahead and actually just test this right now and see if this actually sets that session cookie. So if we go to Postman, if we go to cookies right here, we see that there are no cookies. And if I send this request now, what's gonna happen is we're gonna go ahead and create the session, set the cookie, and we should see it in here. So let's go ahead and send that request. And it looks like everything went through. And if I go to my cookies now, we see this session right here that we set. We see the actual session secret and all that information right here. So HTTP only, secure, the path, and so on. So we've successfully set it. And what we need to do now is go ahead and actually get this session from the cookies on subsequent request. So this is where we can now use our session client. So let's go ahead and move to that route now. So let's close this out and we're gonna use create session client. So in session client, we'll go to user. That's our route. So this is simply supposed to just get the currently authenticated user and we'll import create session client right there. And then let's go ahead and actually get this. So we'll create some space right now and we'll just do const, we'll get the account and this will be await create session client. And for the session client, we do need to pass in the request right there because we do need to get that cookie later. So one thing I did wanna mention is that anytime we're creating this client instance, we wanna make sure that this is created on every single request and that we're not sharing this across other requests. If we do that, there are security issues that could pop up. So make sure you're always creating this on every single request. So from here, what we need to do is go ahead and actually get that current user. So we can use account here, make that request to the user. So let's go ahead and just write a try catch here. If everything goes good, we'll return the user object. If not, then we will return that error. So first we're just gonna go ahead and grab this response in the try, and then we'll bring one into the catch here. And in this one, we're just gonna go ahead and pass in the entire error. And then for the user, let's go ahead and get the user. So we'll just do const, user is equal to await account dot get and that should do it so let's go ahead and test all of this so we've created the session in the last request when we called sign in so we already have a session cookie so if we go to get user we should see the session cookie right here so that means we can use this to authenticate this request now so right now if we want to get the user we just go ahead and send that request and here we go we see the user object right here so if I want to go ahead and just delete that session, we can just go ahead and test this. We'll delete the session. If I try to make the request again, we're going to get this error. It says we're unauthorized. So I could go back to set session, go ahead and log in. That should set the session cookie. If I go back up here, now I see it. And if I make the request, now I'm logged in. Okay, so that's it for this introduction to SSR with AppRite. Now, before you go, make sure you're subscribed to the AppRite YouTube channel because there's so much more that I need to cover on this topic. If you don't wanna miss all those tutorials and use cases, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video.